Okay, everybody. Thank you, Tony. Say it. Thank Say it. you, Tony. Mel. Thank you, Tony. Squishy okay. hug. Squishy hug. Okay, thanks for joining. Bye, everybody. No, just kidding. Um, Tony, by the way, uh, we did ask Zod to be here. Zod can't make it. So I'm going to do something with him on the 19th. But uh, we all wanted to get together and kind of thank Tony for giving us a shout-out um, on his latest video, which was the 80th edition, which was so good. It, just taking out all the shout-out he, he did to us, I mean, screw us, just the content he had in there was awesome because what he did – because he not only acknowledged the mistakes he's made in many of his videos, which everybody does, but he, he showed that he learned from them, which is what people in the scientific community does. How many times have you ever seen a creationist do this? Think hard. Think hard. Ever? Um, chirp? Crickets? No, it never happens because creationists don't admit they make silly mistakes i was just talking on facebook and i i just couldn't believe at the level of it that he was talking on because it was just one mistake after another and i'm like i i gotta go i i, got, I just can't so yeah so tony reed that was a great video you know you have one of the best series on the internet um you know how creationism taught me real science is just a great premise because it it hooks you in because you think you're going to watch one thing and then you watch another because you think it's going to be a creationist video right he's so sly he's slick but then you watch it and you go shit he got me so anyways you guys have been watching him for a while right i've seen a few of his things <laughs> so and it's pretty cool he's really good at his presentation i think he's a he's got a very great he's got a great voice and his engagement involving with the content um and i do like the fact that he does go back and he does a show you know like the show where he said i messed up on this that's okay i messed up on this and that's okay you know, but that's that's kind of part of the charm and also important when you're trying to be a science communicator. When I went and saw Neil deGrasse Tyson, he had a typo on his slide. He had a typo. It was just clearly blatantly right there and somebody hollered it out. It says this and he goes, thank you for reading my slides. I will fix that right now. He immediately walked over to his laptop and fixed it. But to a creationist, and that, that negates his entire Ph.D., Yes, That's the way they think for some reason. I don't know why. It's I, I think because a lot of people don't understand that being wrong is part of the learning process. And sometimes you have to be wrong a lot in order to figure out what works. So... I mean, that's pretty much 90% of science is failure. And, and a lot of people don't see behind the, the behind the scenes of all of the tests that fall apart and you know, I had a protein that sat in the refrigerator for two and a half weeks. I'm like, this is probably going to fall apart, but I'm going to keep trying. And guess what? It fell apart, you know, but I have all the data to say we can't let it sit in the refrigerator for two and a half weeks. All right, so let me ask you, because I just had a video that I put on this the other day, and I I, I, I was lazy, I admit it. I just put the, the screen cap on. I didn't I didn't do the Skylar Fiction thing where I had, you know, a beginning and an out on the video and called it a transformation piece, because that's, that's pretty what Skylar does. But I love you, Skylar. I'm glad you're back. But the video that I had the other day was a screen capture that I got from about seven minutes uh, on one of Nephi's hangout when Nephi repeatedly, and he's done this before, has said that DNA is comprised of amino acids. Now, I asked this question from the live feed because I know that he doesn't know the answer because he keeps getting it wrong. And sure as shit, when I asked him, and actually I asked and then Thick Shades had asked uh, Nephilim Free, you know, Steve McCurry wants to know, you know, do you still think that amino acids are comprised, excuse me, DNA is comprised of amino acids? And he's like, oh, physically structured, yes, of course they are. And I'm like, oh. so, So as the genetics expert, Mel, um, can you can you politely correct Nephi once again about the, the monomers and structure of DNA not being amino acids? Or am I totally hosed on this? Because I'll accept you know, reproof and correction if I'm totally, totally batshit wrong on this and I'll never broadcast again, but that's okay. Oh, goodness. So we need to make sure Nephi understands the difference between protein and DNA. Because that could be a big thing that people don't completely wrap their brain around. Both protein and DNA are what we call macromolecules. They're biological macromolecules. Protein is made up of amino acids. That's why they call it a polypeptide. Peptide is a fancy word for amino acid. Poly means many. So you get a lot of peptides together, a lot of amino acids together. They make this really nice structure of a protein and the shape kind of dictates what it does. Now, that is where you find amino acids. DNA 
Now, DNA, we know, is a twisted ladder, that spiral staircase. That's its natural, that's its natural formation. DNA is made of nucleotides, nucleic acids. That's what we're looking at when we're dealing with DNA. Now, he might be confusing using DNA to make proteins because that's how they're made. DNA dictates which amino acids go together, but DNA is not made of amino acids. DNA dictates how they're put together, though. Yeah, you're giving him far too much credit because we used to think that as well. But no, he physically, he said they're physically comprised of amino acids. DNA is physically comprised well, of amino acids. So that's, I try to give people you try, credit a little and bit. And God bless you, know? you for it, you know. Um, <laughs> But it just, yeah, I, I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. But anyways, real quick, let's get Jackson. Jackson, um, you know, obviously, Tony, put a shout out to you because your channel is wonderful. Um, I, I've learned more about whale penises than I've ever thought I would ever learn in my life. And I thank you for it. I don't know what I'm ever going to do with that information, but I thank you for it. Um, oh, if I ever go on Jeopardy and they ask me about whale penises, I'm going to I'm gonna ace it. So, what? Exactly. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I love that he took the, the quote that was... Uh, well, now we've talked about whale penises. What about the whale vagina? I never knew how silly that sounds out of context. I haven't watched that one yet. Did I miss that? Did you did you actually do one on that? Well, that was the the whale sex video, and he took he took that. The well, part I thought you were do a whole segment. I, did, I thought you were gonna do a whole new one. Yeah, watch the whale the uh, the whole whale thing. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think I do a transitioning one. to the the other uh, uh, whale genital. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. That's right. Good times. I had to read a Scientific American uh, article about that, and it was very interesting. And you had whale porn. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, it was uh, lots of whale sex. Lots There's of whale sex. Interesting technical literature on whale sex. <laughs> so if I ever wanted to date a whale, I'm going to like ask for your advice, right? There might be some... Uh, excluding the interspecies problems. difficulties getting in there. Okay, well... <laughs> And also ethical concerns. How oh, it'd be beyond, it's way beyond deep. ethical considerations at that point. I mean, yeah, I would, that'd be the last thing I'd be concerned about with my problems if I wanted to start dating a whale. So, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, so, so um, you know, what, what, what Tony did was really nice. I mean, it, uh, I know he was going to shout people out on his 80th episode. He said that, then he was going to go on hiatus. And, uh, I, you know, I, he only, if you notice, he only has like 15-minute videos, right? They're real short. Yes. And they've been that way. And so he had to cram a lot in, in that 15 minutes. And so for him to, to shout out to me, you two, Exabyte Spider, who has awesome stuff as well, um, that really is meaningful because he makes the most amount of his time on his videos, you know. He really does. Yeah. He, he, he crams a lot of useful information in a short period of time. He does it better than I do. My videos are probably entirely too long, but to be fair, I am in also engaging with my audience, and that kind of adds a bit of time to it because people ask me questions when I'm live. And so when I'm engaging with people, and sometimes they're inappropriate questions, and I don't even, because I read the questions out loud because I stream on three platforms, Facebook, Periscope, and on, on um, YouTube. So I have comments coming in, and then there are people that watch on Periscope that tweet to me but don't have the app. So I have questions coming from several different locations, and I can't put that in my video per se. So I have to read back questions that people say to me so everybody else can know what it is that I'm answering. So that adds a lot of time to my video. So I find that there is a wonderful art of taking as much of what you can say and shortening it in a very brief brevity is, is an art form isn't it i mean you ha you yes. do learn to be brief and one thing you definitely learn on youtube is people have very limited attention spans right live feed yeah see i'll watch the live feed watching they're going away they're going away bye guys yeah no see they, they do <laughs> they have very limited attention spans and i do too um unless i'm being entertained i will stop watching something and move on to something else. I think we all do that, right? So when you make a video, it's got to be brief, but it's got to be pointy, and it's got to be informative, and it's got to, you know, say what you're trying to get across, correct? Yes, right. absolutely. I have thought about going back with my, my big talks, you know, where I'm live, and just doing a shortened version and then uploading that. Here's the long talk that I gave. Here's the 10-minute version if nobody said anything to me. <laughs> so I was just speed through <laughs> 15, 20 minutes at most. You know, that I guess that would be useful, especially for people that don't want to listen to an entire hour. <laughs> Somebody said the rumpus should take lessons. Oh, 
that's harsh but true. Love you, Rumpus. But Rumpus knows that he is brevity is not his area of expertise, right? He's, right. He, he's not good at brevity. We'll give him that. But you know what? If you want in detailed summations of things, Rumpus is the guy to go to. He he very rarely gets stuff wrong when it comes to the physics. So. Yeah. So anyways, one of the other things I want to talk about, and by the way, if you do want to come in here, we are on Skype. Message me on Skype. Actually, you know what? If you would, because I don't want to, like, change my thing around. Uh, could you message, message, like, Jackson? And Jackson, do you know how to bring him in on Skype? Nod your head. Is that a rhetorical question? Uh, I, maybe? All you do is we'll drag him in. If, so, if they message you, you just drag him into the call. That's it. Okay. Okay. Because um, I'm screen enough. sharing here, and I don't want to mess it all up. But um, put my gloves on. All right. You can't really screw it up too bad. <laughs> but if GS Driver, the Geek Room, or uh, Kyle accepted. messes you, message uh, Jackson Wheat, and then he'll bring you in. So anyways, I want to talk a little bit, if I can, about the skeptic community, because one of the things that uh, Tony was bringing up is how he's noticed in the past mm -hmm. the skeptic community has been fractured by various things, mostly, I think, mm -hmm. due to involvement, do, doing things with um, social justice or mm -hmm. identity politics or, or just things that are unrelated to what it means to be just be a skeptic. Um, I don't follow the term skepticism. I think that skepticism means something specifically. It means, you know, the, the inability to have knowledge. And I think we do have knowledge. But I think it's fine to be a skeptic, right? I'm skeptic when it comes to claims. I don't take people at face value when they say they've been inducted by aliens. I don't take people at face value when they say that, you know, they spoke to Jesus. They might have, right? But I, I don't necessarily buy into it right off the bat, right? That's what I think to have a skeptical attitude. Now, I could be completely wrong on that, and somebody like Ozzy can throw me under the bus and say, Steve, you're an idiot. Fine, but that's kind of how I'm I'm thinking about these things. How, how do you guys take the word skeptic, and what have you seen in the skeptic community that has changed from you guys being new, right? I've been, like, moderate, but not old school, but moderate school. You're new school. So what have you guys have seen change since you've been online? No, but... Me first. Yeah, okay. let's let, well, let Jack let let uh, let Wheat go because he's been quiet. He's shy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was not well. a male superiority thing, by the way. Okay, didn't pick it because he's male. We, we'll get into that yeah, as well. Yeah, I'm probably offended, Steve. Damn I'm right. Quiet. Yeah, oh, we're gonna talk yeah. about that as well. That's some so funny shit that's been going down with all that. And you know, I'm not even funny. I think it's sad. I think I'm gonna say the word sad more than funny. But no. Go ahead. Well, I have been on YouTube, not active, but um, I've watched YouTube long enough to see the the split into people kind of, people, you know, being skeptical and whatnot uh, about Christianity and creationism and things like that. And then they turn, and then quite a few of them turn towards, you know, things like feminism and, and social justice warriors and things like that. And I remember, I think, like, The Amazing Atheist was one of the first big channels, if I remember correctly, to, to kind of go in that direction. And then since then, a whole lot of other channels have followed. And that's one of the things I hope I never do. I hope that if what I say about, if I run out of things to talk about in biology, then I'll stop. I won't go into politics or anything like that. So It's a minefield. And, and, and yeah. your, but your channel's not set up specifically for skepticism or atheism. Your your channel's really more dedicated toward the hard sciences, right? Biology yeah, yeah, mostly just biology. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I would much rather, while I do call myself an atheist, I would much rather tell someone about evolution than why God such and such doesn't exist. So let yeah. me ask you, would you rather have somebody say, um, rather give up the belief in God, or actually somebody say rather they give up the belief that um, of like creationism. So in other words, if you had a choice between a person saying I believe evolution is true, or I know evolution is true, or I no longer believe in God, which would you rather take? I'd much rather someone or convince someone that evolution is true rather than convince someone that God. And I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. Okay, so like, Mel, nine times out of ten, <laughs> do, you, do you do you do you agree with that, or you differ? I, I agree with that. No, and the reason why I would rather them understand what evolution is is because for me, science and religion aren't really at odds. They have nothing to do with each other. And I would much rather a person understand what basic concepts are, what the words mean, and then they can make up their own minds on everything else. Because once they start critical thinking, 
then they're able to go and, and take evidence, overcome their own cognitive biases, and be able to make more informative decisions about their life. It's neither here nor there for me whether or not they believe in God. I want to make certain that they understand fundamental concepts in science and they're not going on incorrect information like the devil planted the fossils, that's why evolution's wrong, or the DNA it's a is made of amino acids. <laughs> yeah, so DNA yeah. is made of amino acids. And I'm like, yeah, no, it's really not. No. And then, you know, dinosaurs are conspiracy by scientists. They're all made from chicken bones. And I'm, I've heard that before. I've yeah, heard Christian all Oakley. kinds of things. So yeah. it's like, um, I would much rather them say, okay, this is what evolution is. Yes, okay, I understand it now. They Whether or not they believe it, Okay, but if they say they believe it, I'm like, fantastic, but I would much rather than just understand it. <laughs> okay, well, let me, let me ask you this then, because there's two, two questions that have been on my mind when it comes to the skeptic community. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Call of Dusty was trying to do a revisal, and that kind of failed. I don't think he even put any effort into it. But one of the right. first things I noticed with the skeptic community, um, there's only so much to talk about on YouTube. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's kind of like one of those things, publish or perish. And I think maybe, do you think there's a possibility that some of the other YouTubers out there, when they were heavy in the skeptic community, have just kind of run out of things to, to talk about? And so they have to, to kind of go into other things like feminism and social inequality and racial relations and all this uh, other things. I mean, do you think that's a natural extension from where their position is? Or do you think that that's something they actually wanted to do? Because I have no desire to. And I hope, I, like you, Jackson, I don't want to get into any of that stuff. So what do you, well, what do you I, think? For me, um, having been a woman in science, it's kind of hard for me to separate myself from an equality stance because of the fact of what I've had to overcome in order to get to where I have to be. So it's very much a part of me. So in some degree, I am kind of vocal about inequality because I want diversity in science. I want diversity in, in tech, engineering, mathematics, because for me, I go and I watch a film like Hidden Figures, and I'm like, can you imagine how much further we would be in our society if we were more inclusive back then? All of the minds that we could have had that, you know, that we didn't have. So for me, it's it's already kind of a bit of who I am because of what I've had to deal with. Um, and what I know other people have had to deal with. So it's hard for me to not voice some kind of we need we have biodiversity biodiversity is important on our planet well guess what we need diversity in stem for the same reason because people can bring various perspectives and the more perspectives we have in trying to solve a problem the quicker we can solve the problem so that's kind of the angle that i go at with that so for me it's it's hard for me to just coming from academia and having left academia because there's not that much money involved for research I mean, and that's that's a political thing. At some point in time, I, I'm going to have to dip my toe into those waters a little bit. Now, but now, I don't stay there. Do the Illuminati know? overlords know, as a woman in science, that you were allowed in? Do, do they give you permission? Or how does that work? You know, I pretended to be a man for so long, and I don't know how I fooled all these people. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah I definitely know how you fooled anybody. You know, but, yeah. like, but trying to use my red hair as a beard, that got me through, like, for a while as a Viking. I was like, hello, oh, everybody. That makes, yeah, you know what? That would make a lot of sense. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, it's amazing that they fell for it for so long and nobody asked. So so, it's just, so somebody did a super chat saying that their, um, their team man's cat, by the way, that was the... Uh, the thumbnail I had, because I just love that image that Darwin's Greatest Hits did. It has G-Man's cat with G-Man's hat on it, and I just I can't stop laughing. I died when I saw that. I put it on my Facebook. I put it on my Twitter. I sent it to my mom. You know, I just put it everywhere. I was like, you got everybody's got to see this. So I, if Darwin's Greatest Hits, if you watch this, that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Best best crop uh, ever. So I used that as the thumbnail, and, and one of the, the uh, persons in the live chat said, um, I'm G-Man's cat, and I, and I am skeptical if I'm going to get fed tonight or something. <laughs> Poor cat. I normally try to chat in on the on the live chat, but for whatever reason, I can't pull it up in my browser. So. Well, we got Darwin's deity's dog, and now we have G Man's cat. So, you know, <laughs> it makes only you know makes sense that we have uh, G Man's cat since we had Darwin's deity's dog. Um, Goodness. So, uh, Jackson, by the way, so what what do you want to add on that real quick? I mean, you you're like I said, you're relatively. You, you said you said you you've been around a while, right? But I mean, do, I have been do you think that silently for a long while? Yeah. Do, you said you said your channel's not going to go in that direction. So do you do you agree though 
that there's only so much to talk about and people want to be diversive or divisive or whatever. And they want they want to have this you know, I, I I hate to bring up the term blood sports, but that's kind of the direction it's going. Do you guys know what that is? Where is that, is that like gladiators and lions and stuff? Because no. It feels, no. Blood sports is what we talked about the other day on the Pimp Monk show, on his new show, The Morning mm-hmm. Wood. Um, I don't know if you ever watched them, but blood sports is basically the, an alt-right group that they get people to come in there and just pound them on, um, you know, white, you know, they like white supremacist stuff and just, it's just like a kumite of debate only. It's a dog pile in a shit show. But they get a fortune. Andy Warkowski, I think, made like $20,000 one live chat because of the wow. vitriolic nature. And I'm yeah. like, I don't give a fuck how much money is involved with that. I find it just, just it's, I have no interest in it. It's just nothing I would want to do. So let me ask you, Jackson. I mean, do you think some people in the skeptic community have gone that route because there is. There is money to be made. These these outright neo Nazis are going to channels and doing PayPal or what is it, um, super chat, in order to foster their narrative. And I, I don't know how to, to stop that. I mean, I haven't had, they haven't gotten to mine, thank God, because I don't want their fucking money. But I mean, how, how do you stop that? How do you prevent people from doing that? Well, um, well, I do to to answer the the other question. Uh, I do think it's a little bit of both. I think it's both that. You know, there is a limited amount of, of topics to discuss, but also I think that they are interested in going into politics because everyone has an opinion on politics, whether or not you voice it. Um, but I think there are there are ways to stay within topics, like the way I've gone for my biology channel is, so you can break down biology into a huge amount of these little topics. It doesn't just have to be evolution versus creationism. It can be all these different areas that you can go. And so you can keep one thing going for a long time, but eventually it is going to end ultimately. And so, But also I think it's a little bit of they want to voice their opinion on, on politics and other social issues because they have a, a following and... They can do that sort of See, thing. I, I think know, as long as there's people country. around, there's conversation. And we, we have been in touch with numerous different organizations and numerous different uh, communities. And we're having a huge influx of people coming in, Christians and atheists. And I think that as long as there's new voices, people will like to hear new and different perspectives. That's one of the things on the Non Sequitur show. We're going to have lots of conversations. Um, and it's hopefully things that people want to listen to. Like, for example, we have, um, as you guys may know by now, if you haven't, uh, we got Matt Dillon. Hunty. He's going to be on uh, April 24th, 2018 at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, and we have him having a discussion right now, tentatively, and I think this is going to happen, but I, I'm pretty sure. I haven't got p- perfect confirmation yet, but close enough. Uh, Inspiring Philosophy is going to be having a chat with him, if you guys know who he is. Is that the, is that the woo guy? The guy uh, no, the Inspiring the- Philosophy is a theistic evolutionist. Okay, he did the video about, like, uh, wasn't it like quantum mechanics, and then there was like the owl Probably. who did like a video in response to that. Uh, Trey Jadlow. Was it Trey Jadlow? No, that was a uh, King Crocoduck. Well, I mean, I think um, oh, there was a guy who was like, a, there's like a little brown puppet owl, and he has a channel, and he went through inspiring philosophies videos. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah yeah! Um, I haven't seen him in a while. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that was inspiring philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> I want, although I did watch one of his videos and he, I had to agree with him in saying that like, you know, you can accept evolution and be a Christian. I was like, it's a good thing. He's, to tell a, he's a nice guy. I've had him on my channel before. I am very civil dialogue with him over the last couple of days. I'm trying to arrange this. Um, we were going to get uh, Frank Turk, but he couldn't make it. And um, we also have Matt Slick that's going to be engaging with Goddess Engineer at some point. But um, and this is not a secret, uh, as you guys may know, Matt Slick's wife had some surgery. Um, she's doing well. But obviously, you know, he needs to take care of her, and so we didn't want to, like, you know, kind of burden him with, with having a discussion when he needs to take care of his, his wife. And so, but he was he's down for it. Matt Slick will be joining us on the Non-Sequitur Show. Um, we also have a couple people from AIG. We actually managed to finally, uh, I think, agree to come on. That's going to be in April or May. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you one of the names. I think mm-hmm. I think there's a pretty good chance we might have Kevin Anderson. Dr. Kevin Anderson, if you guys know him from AIG. He's a biologist. Yeah. Kevin Anderson. I've, t- I've, I've talked to him for a while. Stuff. Maybe. Maybe. Mm. Hmm. 
Okay. Well, <laughs> it, it, the people in the live chat probably know who he is. I don't know. I know a few of them. Like, uh, I mean, not just heard him, but there's like Jensen and uh, uh, there's some of the other fun guys. Well, we're not going to get Georgina because she, I don't think, even believes her own nonsense. I, I think she knows she's lying at this point. That's what I think. Yeah. yeah. I hate to say it. I really, I, I told myself I wasn't going to use the word liar this year. And I, I don't want to accuse somebody of lying, so I, I'll kind of back off that a little bit. But I don't think she's honest. How about that? I have to agree with that. I mean, she's not the only one, though. There's also there's like Todd Wood, uh, Kurt Wise. No, I think Todd Wood is honest, actually. Because Todd I mean, Wood yeah, actually he, says he, is, is evidence for evolution. He just does. He just believes that for some reason God supersedes all that. But he does say, stop telling people right, there's no yeah. evidence for evolution. So he, I don't think he's right. dishonest. Um, is it... I think it's Andrew Snelling, who's the geologist, and so he writes, like, regular technical papers where he'll say this formation is, like, two billion years old or whatever, but then he goes to AIG and he's like, no, it's right. 6,000 years old. This was made in the flood. Oh, I, I definitely think he's dishonest. I think I think Fiona had pointed out exceptionally well on one of his Argon dating methods that he just doesn't give a crap, and a few other people yeah. as well, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you guys think we should do on the skeptic community? I mean, you guys know a lot of the new names. We we try to have a, a coalition now, and if you guys haven't seen it, we have a group on Facebook. It's hidden, super secret, top secret. Nobody knows about it. You got another secret handshake, <laughs> and all that stuff. But it, it it's under. Is there um, a password? Yeah, I don't even know the name password. of it. What is it called? It's a long name. It's uh, but it's what holy cool. It's, it's holy cool. Super group. secret, ultra cool. You know awesome individuals who question everything. It's so it cool is. that we don't even know the name of it. It's so top secret. <laughs> I mean, but Did you think of an acronym for that? Shit, no, <laughs> it would be very long. Ultra cool. What is it's the name of that group? Society of individuals who question everything. I don't know. I think the acronym should be like skeptic or something like that. You know, <laughs> it's gonna be like some word we commonly use. We're, we'll think it of has something to be for in it. The, to where you can put it on T-shirts. <laughs> yeah, well, that's another thing we want to talk about. We have we have some T-shirts coming out here, uh, much more. We started a test run, but we got a whole line coming up here um, for the non sequitur show. People have been asking for them left and right. Uh, we've mm -hmm. got we got a lot of cool stuff coming out of that. Uh, but anyways, uh, the group is a atheist, skeptic, free thought YouTubers or something. So, but anyways, it's not that secret. But you do have to be a content creator, and I've noticed that that group has been doing skepticism right. Um, Holy Kool Aid, Prophet of Zod. Uh, genetically modified skeptic Rachel Oates, um, Tony Reed. Uh, who else we got? Names, names. Shut them out. Give them all a shout out. Who, who else are we forgetting here? Gen uh, excuse me, Goddess Engineer, Goddess, Goddess Cranium, Baby. Shannon Q, Paula Gia. Mm -hmm. We forget anybody? I, I know we are, but I feel uh, bad. I feel bad uh, when I forget uh, somebody. Right. Tony Reed just shouted us out, and here we are trying to shout out other people, and we're probably forgetting some really awesome new YouTubers. Oh, I, oh, um, Anna Ordinary. Yeah. You know. yeah. Vice yeah. Well, let me ask the live chat. If you got somebody want that you think we should shout out, fuck Bill Lolo. I'm not shouting out Bill Lolo. No I'm kidding, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> you just said his name. So you oh, I know. Oh, God damn it. Okay, yeah. Bill Lolo, of course. You know Bill Lolo is awesome. One of the nicest <laughs> guys ever. Passive aggressive me. about it, you know. That guy who that I don't guy, like. That guy, Bill. Well, yeah. you know, Bill's going to be a superstar, <laughs> like I said. He's going to surpass all of us, so we got to have a little bitterness toward him, right? <laughs> Oh, the Geek Room. Yeah, of course, the Geek Room. How can I forget the Geek Room? <laughs> well, oh, my goodness. Yeah. They're funny. They're I love so the Geek funny. Room. Um, yeah, the ge definitely um, Frankie <laughs> and Bran Brandon over in the Geek Room. Um, they're definitely Frankie an affiliate has, channel to ours. He has um, a lot of patience. <laughs> well, he's stoned all the time. <laughs> when you're high as fuck, you have a lot more patience than the average person. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> um, Oh, I want to put out a shout out to somebody you guys may not, guys may not know. Um, a kid new five is in the live chat, and by the way, live chat is now recorded. That's why I don't have it in the OBS. It is now on replay, and it's by default, so I don't have to change anything. I don't think because it's worked a few times, but it'll now show the live chat how, it's, how it was during the recording. How cool is that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it, a kid new five has some parody videos, and they're freaking hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. He only has like three hundred subs. How I don't fucking know. The dude, the dude has some awesome videos. They're hilarious. He had, he did one on Eric Wolfbitten Jewel, as you guys remember him. Think, uh, Bill Lolo had a discussion with him. I had a discussion with him. A lot of people had discussions with the guy. And what he does is, he'll give you about five seconds to talk, and then he'll bloviate for the next hour, and then delete the video. <laughs> oh wow! Wow. <laughs> 
I'm gonna Most say all these things like and then delete. God, yeah, it's bad. Man. It was bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, but but go check out. I was in. What's that? Let me tell you. <laughs> What's that? I said that reminds me of a talk I was in. Let me tell you. <laughs> who'd you Who'd you have it with? Oh, it was on uh, True's channel. Oh uh, uh, yeah, well that goes without good saying. Times. But <laughs> but you haven't was, if you haven't I checked out five yet. Opportunity to talk to him on somebody else's channel, then I found out I was like. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no thanks. No, thank you. Yeah, I thanks. know somebody was trying to arrange that, and the God bless her for trying to arrange that. And I know I got I got screwed and foobard, but all in all, I I think that it ended up okay. You probably were better off not having a convo with him. Just my personal well, I mean, opinion, but given, I would have listened. Given sure. The chat that happened later on, you know, <laughs> that I wasn't involved with. I heard about. Yeah. And was sent yeah. sound bites, and I was like, well, you know what? I could go in the kitchen. And I could make sandwiches. If you make a damn stuff. good sandwich, I'm all for that. But you know, I'm. I'd be the I, same I'm for Jackson chemist. too. Jackson, go make me a fucking sandwich if you're good at it. I'm hungry. <laughs> you know, I am a chemist, and my cooking mm. skills are are quite amazing because I'm a chemist. So. Yeah. But who says that kind of shit? This is 2018. Because you know. I don't get that are, at all. Are, that that um, its current year will never suffice. <laughs> There will always be someone. But just when you think there's like some threshold of civility with these people. Nope. Well, <laughs> nope. You know, Fuck it. I, whatever. I, and to be quite frank, there was um, a university professor that I had done some undergraduate research with. And I was I was wanting to pursue um, biology graduate work. I ended up getting into the chemistry department. But the biology graduate work I wanted to do. He was on the graduate board, and he looked at me, and he said, science is hard, and you're a girl. You should be a teacher. <laughs> oh, God damn. Okay, this oh. was 2011. This wasn't like Mad Men. This, was this wasn't was like the 60s, ago. right? This was like you know. seven years ago. Wow. And Facebook reminds me, because I posted on Facebook, I'm like, I cannot believe I actually had this conversation. So the anniversary of it pops up on Facebook. This went, and I'm like... This was the day. I yeah. should go and talk to him and say, "By the way." <laughs> and does he not? I'm does he not know what a, now. Does he not know what a barracuda <laughs> means? I mean, you cannot throw that term around and not understand what you, that word means. That's like you know me saying that somebody's a cougar. I, I, it obviously has a connotation to it. I mean, there's no way he did not know that. I'm sorry, I don't buy it. He, I mean, he was on the graduate board, and he would only write me letters of recommendation if I was going to be a teacher. So guess what? I had to be teacher. A teacher, and you know, and I'm a good teacher. Got a master's in that, and then the chemistry department like, we want you to get a master's here, and we'll pay for it. I said okay, and then I got a fellowship. Well, I was there, so the chemistry department didn't have to pay for it. And then I picked up a master's. And I'm like, all right, peace out. And so I was like, but but see, so the problem is though, Mel, so. <laughs> Mel, the problem is you're still a woman. I, you know, and you know. I'm so lucky that all these men just let me into this field because, you know. What is it you wrote? Degrees? Let me quote you here. I got, I just, I got to find this quote. Um, oh, where'd you put it? I got to go find I, it. Oh. You know, and I have a 3.71 graduate GPA. And I want a fellowship. You know, and it's like. And I'm gonna. I have a publication coming up where I'm a co-author in a breast cancer test. I clearly. Yes, you're smart. We we flat, we do know this. I've been flying by the seat of my pants just on my looks. <laughs> Let's see. What'd you write? Oh, God damn it. I don't even know where the hell you put it. What'd you write? Tell me. Um, which, something, which, which, uh, just recently, something like, I'm so glad men have been allowing me to do oh, something. Really. I don't want to misquote you, so I can't find it. What okay, did you say? So, okay, so here it is. Uh, I was like, I'm so lucky to have unqualified men on the internet tell me how wrong I am. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. You are so fortunate to have that. I mean, how yeah, lucky I'm, are you as a woman to have unqualified men tell you that you're wrong? I mean, geez, <laughs> you, we all should be in that situation, shouldn't we be? <laughs> it's, like, it's so, it's all the time. <laughs> it's like, I'm sitting there like, okay. Oh, God. So, if you ever see me like on a debate with somebody or talking on any of the boards, if I just go, okay, I'm just like, yeah, whatever, man. Okay. That's just freaking Those, hilarious. I've got like paragraphs. People will spend time spewing ignorance at me, like, if this is this, okay. <laughs> so they get from me. Yeah. Like, yeah, and they don't let you go me. either. It's like you tell them you're done with the conversation, and they, like, fucking follow you around like a puppy. Oh, you said this. This means you think I'm a rapist. <laughs> what? <laughs> 
Yeah. I don't recall calling you a rapist ever, but you're sexist because you've gone from here saying all these horribly offensive things about women, and then you come over here. I guess it's but, my fault. But then they sexist. say, "How dare you call me sexist?" And I read the shit people write to. I'm like, okay, I'm not even a social justice warrior, and holy shit, that's pretty sexist. <laughs> <laughs> even for me, uh, yeah. So that's yeah. hilarious. I'm just like you're just. You're part of the problem. No, I'm not. And these stupid sluts are asking for it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And they say things like that. Oh, you're, not, you're not even exaggerating. That's exactly what they say. And they say, well, I'm not trying to be sexist or anything. But, you know, these stupid sluts are saying this. And it's like, wow, okay. <sighs> oh, man. And then you're responsible for women not reporting. I'm personally responsible for women not reporting. Here's a study. I wrote an entire article on this on my website. Here are all the studies that I've listed. Go read a little bit. It's okay. Tell it's people to read. What I'm is really wrong with you? I don't you? get messages like that. I just get people who copy and paste these gigantic messages from like creation <laughs> websites. I oh, I love like the kind of paste Jackson ones, right? Day, so that's great. Don't you love oh. that, Jackson? When they think they're making a great point, and all they've done is cut and paste something from AIG, like their like their words, and you're like, oh, please. Because it's so it. easy to find it. You just like copy one sentence, and it's like, oh, there's the article. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, it's really yeah. fun when they like read an abstract to you, and they don't know what the words mean. <laughs> well, they generally oh, don't, don't do that yeah. to me, but I'm not, you know, one of those people they would read abstracts to, but. But Monkey Man says, it. what's wrong with being sexy? By the way, nothing is wrong with being sexy. I mean, I'm enjoying being sexy. I like being sexy. You like me being sexy. But <laughs> See, nothing's wrong like, with that. But that doesn't... Sexy know, has nothing to do with sexism. Beard. They're two different things. Okay, the beard <laughs> thing, not very sexy. Yeah, no, yeah not, ver- no, not sexy. No, you know, like my Viking beard? No, for some reason it reminds me of Ocean, and I don't know why. Ocean <laughs> Caltoy. Okay. Not the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> the you know, I guess it is the ocean, ocean. The ocean kill toy. Like blue, and my hair is not blue. Oh, he has. He has. Doesn't he have like perfectly blue eyes or something? He has like piercing eyes. They're so sultry. Oh yeah. yeah. I think he does. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. My fanboying over ocean. A little bit. <laughs> okay. It's okay. <laughs> He's got a conversation coming up here too, and I forgot with whom. Oh well. <laughs> It's pretty funny. Um, he talks, He, he you know, I, I get some interactions on Twitter a lot from individuals. And then Google Plus, I just got that app. And so I'm like, oh, this is a thing. I'm, you know, I, I'm kind of like into social media, but just a few things. And they're like, you should get Google Plus. And I get on that. And then the Hangouts, my phone's just blowing up. I'm like, oh, oh I have to turn dude, you, you ha- off. You bit. have to turn off. <laughs> okay, listen, you have to turn off your notifications for your phone or else it will go off every second. I turned my phone on once and I thought the poor thing was going to fall apart because all the notifications yeah. came through at once and it was on vibrate. I, I, it was, it, I thought the thing was going to blow up. <laughs> I, mean, I, like, I oh, had stop. to turn off my notifications on Google Plus because I'll go and check. You have 15. I'm like, really? <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> I've turned them off on Twitter. I'll go and I'll look at Twitter on my Twitter account. It's like 20 plus. It doesn't give you a number anymore. It like stops at 20 and then it says plus. And I'm like, well, okay and then i'll go through and i'll try and and sometimes i don't even get all my notifications so i tell people please use a hashtag if you actually want to talk to me <laughs> use hashtag hey scientist mill that's just for people who actually want to get through to me because my ads fill with all kinds of stuff <laughs> it's just- oh not me i am i'm uh, always looking for attention you know <laughs> you're you're an attention whore Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's all I do every day. I'm just waiting for my phone DM. to buzz. We we Jackson's just had an interview. What's that? Time. We just had Jackson's an interview. Always, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. We got a little lag. <laughs> Skype. <laughs> Fuck Skype. Yeah, go ahead. No, Jackson please. be sliding in my DMs, going, "You're not liking all of my tweets." Science exactly. Smell, you know. That's what I what, do. I'm relevant. You're relevant. And yes, you're relevant. Yes, you are. And you must like everything. What you about are, the whale sex? You're you didn't known like in the community the now. Penises pictures I sent you. Wait, Jackson, you're sending out whale, whale whale dick pics? Yeah. Uh, okay. No promises. I know, I know Jackson has I done that, I'm sure. Finish. Yeah. Um, by the way, I want, to, I want to say hi to Eat, Eat Meal, who I haven't seen in ages. I just gave him mods. Um, welcome back, dude. You've been gone forever. Um, <laughs> I, I like when people return that I haven't seen for a long while. You know, people that are, like, big supporters of the channel that, that you know, have all in real life stuff to do. But Eat Meal is really, really awesome. So welcome back to him. 
Uh, and I totally forgot what it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. We just interviewed. Um, do you guys know who Nate Dern is from Funny or Die? He has a, I think so. He's a comedian. I know Called, what Funny has, or Die is. Yeah, Funny or Die has about two and a half, four point million subscribers. Uh, Nate Dern was the head writer for Funny or Die. He wrote a book called um, Not Quite a Genius. We just interviewed him the other day. Yeah. That'll be out. And give us two weeks to put that one out. We, we're backlogged on Non Sequitur Show, like huge backlog. We've interviewed like a dozen <laughs> something, and we just haven't cut cut it all up yet. So, because we don't want to put out podcasts like every day, right? It's like once a week, so we're <laughs> we're like two months <laughs> ahead. Um, and by the way, we have over five thousand, uh, almost six thousand downloads alone just from Fire um, Side FM. Yay! So if you include probably all the RSS feeds, we're probably around twenty or thirty thousand downloads already. That's not even including YouTube. Not even touching YouTube, so we are we are the top five podcast in podcast land, and I think we'll make top podcast for the month. Yeah, we're kicking ass, you know. So I wish I had as much time as you do. <laughs> well, it's dude, you have. I mean, you do know you run a podcast. There's a lot of, that goes into it, especially with the RSS yes. feeds and shit. It is I, not. I run a podcast. Easy. I have a website. I also have a YouTube channel that I stream on three different platforms, yeah. and it's just me. And by the way, <laughs> oh sorry. I just want to say real quick, Prophet of Zod, we, we will have something with Prophet of Zod on the 19th, so he can thank Tony Reed as well. Um, but he had to work today, and I wanted to do something with you guys, so I missed you. Okay. Aww. Um, but yeah, Prophet of Zod, go check out his channel. He has a thing he's doing now where he's doing a cartoon, um, kind of like um, kind of like Dark Matter 2525, uh, and it's funny. And we got uh, Frankie from the Geek Room is Jesus, Tony Reed is God. <laughs> Um, I don't remember who the Holy Ghost it was, um, but uh, hopefully Prophet of Zod has said that I can do a, you know, a voice. Do they need a Mary Mag? Maybe. You know, I, I, what I'll probably do is like an onomatopoeia or something. I'll just be like, because I don't have like a radio voice. I'll be like doing or something, you know, like, or dog. Woof, woof. That'll be my whole extent of the project because, you know, I'm not, I don't have any voices that I do. So, but have you guys watched mm. it yet? You haven't watched it? I wow. haven't had the pleasure yet. I have. So, I'm so behind on lots of things. <laughs> Robert Tilton is the Holy Ghost. Okay, thank you, Prophet. I know it's hard to catch up with all of this stuff, isn't it? It's just like it's it's a lot. I'm actually I, I'm running my show tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central, and I have um, Dr. Stephen Hobbs on. Um, we're gonna have a chat about the work he does and the outreach that he does for the local communities in trying to increase diversity in the sciences. And he has a, a grant associated with that. So I'll definitely try to check that out. Yeah. yeah. So oh, oh my God. I Reese says I could be the tree, like the tree of life or tree of knowledge. That's all I could do that part. I could just like, wait, I wouldn't have to say anything. They so yeah, just talk. build a tree. Just say the tree, the tree is me. That's fine. I don't even have to say anything. Just build me as the tree of knowledge. Are you going to be the giving tree? The, like that's a whole different thing. Stain? Yeah, that's that's cut yeah. me down and make a boat out of me. <laughs> uh, Silverstein wrote also uh, where the sidewalk ends, and yes. he did a still. What is it? Sylvia Stout will not take the garbage out. Remember that one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm red too. Three by of the way, books, like right over there. Oh, he's genius. He's freaking genius. People that don't know who he is, you gotta go. Oh, he's freaking genius. Oh. I grew up with that stuff, Mel. I, I did read as a kid. Silverstein. Yeah, fantastic. You read one of those and then go pick up a Dr. Seuss book in Spanish. <laughs> Do you know what? You want to know one of the best books I ever read as a kid? And, I, and nobody seems to have ever heard of it. Okay, so I'm going to put this out there. Live chat, please tell me if you've heard of this book. If you haven't heard of it, you should go read it. And if you have read it, please tell me if I'm crazy. Well, okay, sort of crazy. That it is not one of the best books you could read as a kid. It is called The Phantom Toll Booth. I think I read that. It's been... It rings a bell, but it's been it a while. It is awesome. <laughs> now, let's see how many people have agreed with me that, okay, they've heard of it, but they haven't read it. No, I one person heard of it, never heard of it. You're crazy. The doldrums. Yeah, exactly. Um, the doldrums. That was one of the, I love one of the locations of the book. It had the, the dog with the, the stopwatch in his belly. Um, it was all imagination. It was yes, brilliant. Yes, yes. I, I'm familiar. Yeah. I'm familiar. Yeah, great it's book. been a while. I'm trying to think of the books that I read a lot when I was a kid. Did you ever have the Choose Your Own Adventure books? Oh, come now. Look who you're talking to. <laughs> of course I did. 
If you decide to go with this stranger, turn to page forty. Oh, I cheated on that like a mofo. Are you kidding? <laughs> you you would pick both, wouldn't you? You'd yeah, yeah. Like, uh, a better outcome, and yeah. you would flip over to those pages. No, I think when I first started reading them, I actually did them legit wise, you know. And I was like, "Fuck, you're dead." Um, okay. <laughs> Like great, I've, I've, I'm already dead, and the jewel heist hasn't begun yet. Exactly, <laughs> so depressing. I have an original choose your own adventure book somewhere. Oh, I don't poor know Jackson, where he's right so now, young, he doesn't but... know what the fuck we're talking about. His eyes are just like what? Jackson's I... like, there were books that changed midway through. What's well, first he's like, what's a book? <laughs> I only read like nonfiction. I've only been reading nonfiction for a few years now. I've only See, re- in, over the past like. Uh, since the start of high school, I think, uh, I've only read nonfiction unless school made us read, uh, some, something like an ancient book or something like that. You know what? I think reading nonfiction mm. helps you actually understand, uh, excuse me, I, I think reading fiction helps you to re- understand nonfiction. I mean, without science fiction, uh, you can't appreciate actual reality. I mean, think about like reading Isaac Asimov for the first time. Or Arthur C. Clarke or or Heinlein. Oh my God, your mind is expanded. I think all the great scientists have read a lot of science fiction. Would you Would you agree with that or disagree? I I've read a lot of Carl Sagan and even Contact. All of that. It's the the books. He is such a fantastic writer. So even when he writes science fiction, it flows. I read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh well, yes. I've read, that. I read all. I read the, all, all the series. Yeah. Yeah, all, all those. Uh, I haven't read like uh, the Detective Agency, but I've that one looks interesting. They made a show um, out of that one. I've actually. read a lot of Anne Rice. I mean, well, Anne we're Rice, not going to hold that against Ty you. Barker. <laughs> I've met Anne Rice. She mm. signed on my first edition. Well, I guess and it's then, better than Anne um, Rand. <laughs> She's dead though. Atlas but. shrugged. Oh God, no, dude! I will tell you right now. Atlas shrugged. I'm sorry, all you, um, you know, fans of Anne Rand, Randians, and uh, what's what's her movement that she did? Um, oh my God! Oh come on, the big movement that she did. The followers of Anne Rand. Uh, whatever, I'll think of it in a minute. But that was one of the worst books I've ever read in my freaking life. My Atlas shrugged. civics teacher in freshman year, I said she read it twice. <laughs> she liked it that much. Complete crap. <laughs> <laughs> Objectivist, yes, objectivism. Thank you, Raise a Village. Yeah, you know, I know these things. I just can't think of them off the top of my head, and I'm not. I'm too lazy to Google shit right now. But uh, objectivism, oh. <laughs> and then later on, later on, she actually starts collecting social security and stuff in her in her life, and just kind of you know goes against everything that she put forth in objectivism. It's like okay, whatever. Well, you know, it's kind of like the people who say. I will never have chemotherapy. I'll sit here and fast until my cancer goes away, until they get cancer, and then they go get the chemotherapy. What well, is true? <laughs> fasting, fasting for forty days will will get rid of the cancer. I, I, that I will almost guarantee. And, and your and your life. And your yeah. Well, you know, it, that, that's a side effect. <laughs> you know, just, no just one ever died effect. from fasting. <laughs> Are you certain? Go well, talk to people in Ethiopia and let me know how that goes. Well, Tommy <laughs> says nobody's died from the flu. <laughs> no, he's serious. No, he thinks that nobody has died from the flu, and it's just like, oh, I, you know, it's just I call him lawnmower man now. Lawnmower man. Well, I mean, you know, he is an uneducated white male, so you should, you need to listen to well, him. Well, he mows lawns. You, you, you need to listen to I'm him. Told. He's but he but he <laughs> is obviously somebody higher up on the on the ladder that you should pay attention to, and you know, learn something. I can't even say it. I, <laughs> I can't say it. Yeah, no, honey, I just. <laughs> Cleaned the dust off my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you think do you think Tommy would probably have a, even? Well, he wouldn't have a better case. But do you think people people more re- willing to listen to him? He wasn't so fucking misogynistic and so just vitriolic when it comes to certain things. Would you think people would be any different? I don't think I, so. I, really, but. I don't know. I think the blatant disregard for just trying to engage in a conversation is just okay so i would ask him questions like do you know what this word means no that's not important you kind of need to know what words mean in the paper that you're sending me otherwise your entire argument is irrelevant and most of the times the paper that he sent me actually went against his argument no no that's called that's called the tommy hall effect 
Well, you know, it's a real thing. I, no, it's a real thing. I mean, there is something called the Hall effect. I would know, give it a name like that. I would just call it blatant. Look Wolf it up on the wiki. Fingers. No, look, know, it, look it up on the GDC wiki. It's called the Tommy Hall that's effect. GDC it's a real wiki. thing. That's yeah. called when it's just like being a, a belligerent teenager. <laughs> but he's, he's, he, 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 every single time he gives a paper, it goes against his, his, his argument. Like every single time. And Without they, fail. It's not important. I don't know what words mean. Well, it kind of it kind of yeah, it does. You know, you know, if you don't know what's in this paper, you know, well, how how can you use it as well, an argument? No, if I was reading a paper and it's in Swahili and I'm trying to use it to support my argument, would it make sense to do so? <laughs> I mean, I don't speak Swahili, you know, to you. So why would I no, use it? So he doesn't I understand these words. The word that sounds like English a little bit, and that's the thing that I relate to. So I'm going to focus on that one word, and that means that's what this entire paper means. They, that's what they see, though. But <laughs> you got to remember, they are known for doing that, and I and I really hate bringing up old old stuff because we've talked about it so many times. But occasionally we get some new people, so I understand why the things get brought up over and over again. But there was a time, for example, when and I'm, this is a perfect example of when they. They, they gleaned one word out of an abstract or a title. And it was um, Nephilim Free. And I have a video on this. If you want to watch it, Fiona has a video as well. And it was when Nephilim Free had said that the chromosomal fusion for human chromosome 2 wasn't you know, evidence, blah, blah, blah. And he wanted to have this narrative that if you had a balanced Robosonian translocation, it would have uh, dramatic health effects thus that the person who has the translocation couldn't survive, which isn't true because it, all the genetic information is there it's just located differently and so he we asked him for a citation and i believe it was doing a jd kane hangout don't quote me on that but it doesn't really matter if they hang out but i think it was jd kane but there was he he said he cited a paper and he put it on the screen and this paper he was advocating was a refutation of the robosonian translocation fusion and all that other stuff and what the paper said was um, the detrim- and I'm paraphrasing, but the detrimental uh, effects of disease in relationship to translocation of wildlife, meaning moving one wildlife population from one place to another, which has clearly nothing to do with Robosonian translocations. But all he saw that was the word translocation, and decided mm-hmm. that that was good enough to have a refutation for Robosonian translocation being not detrimental to the the host. And we lost our shit. I mean, that was one of the Makes funniest sense. things of all time. Well, it'll never be forgotten because he it just demonstrated that all they do is look for one key word, not even give yes. a shit what the hell the paper's about. See, and that's that's essentially a problem, especially when it comes to various types of bias. I'm I'm actually writing a book on cognitive bias and how it affects our decision making. I've had like pretty good response on going ahead and and writing all of this out and associating it with um, different studies and stuff, but. Cognitive bias can get in the way of a lot of things. And so, you know, when it runs unchecked, we get the racism, we get the sexism, we get the, I'm just going to focus on one word in this abstract because that's relevant to my perspective. It can actually, you know, (laughs) just, I don't know, the way that I see it, if you allow your cognitive bias to go unchecked, you can actually put yourself in potentially harmful situations. But I'll I get into that a little bit later when I'm writing my book about how to overcome your bias to where you don't consistently put yourself in harmful situations. But but it's just people stay within this bubble of ignorance because it's comfortable. And they'll only pick stuff that reinforces this bubble where they feel like they're safe. Um, so I, while well, I do, when I try to educate people, and this is this is kind of like when we we're talking about the skeptic community, and this is something that I try to go about when they're like, "Why don't you just rip apart creationists? Why don't you rip apart all of this?" I'm like, because. A lot of these belief systems that people have are integral and they associate their identity with it. Um, my, my podcast episode I have coming up on Hey Scientist Mills with Evo PhD where she, she, talk, she and I talk very in depth about, ed, about evolution um, education and how when you're presenting evidence to a person that goes against everything that they've ever believed, it's painful but there's no care put into place to help say, hey, 
I know that this is, you know, really, really, you know, painful for you to kind of talk about. And I understand that, you know, this goes against what you, what your personal belief systems are, but there's no care. They just go in and rip people apart. And so you have this one side that's like, creationism creationism and all of this stuff this is what god wants and you have this other side going evolution 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 but there's no taking into consideration that the people that have been brought up and have been told all of these things at some point in time they're going to have to deal with the fact they've been lied to by somebody that's yeah. painful yeah well they also and have the, yeah. they have the, the there's no effect care too. yeah and, you're right about that i think a lot of the a lot of it is like uh, living in the South. There are a lot of places where you can live where you won't know if anyone else agrees with you in that regard. There are a lot of communities that are based, you know, entirely around the church and things like that. And so, if by one way or another you, you know, realize that hey, what they've been telling me this whole time is wrong, you might not necessarily have any outlet uh, by which yeah. to to express this. Or, and you there's, know, talk to other there's people no care it. either. And so yeah. um, when you're, what I try to do, and I wrote an article about this recently on my website on how to talk to people about this sort of thing. You have to remove yourself as a threat. You have to say, I'm, I'm not here to, to challenge your beliefs. I'm not here to, to harm you. I'm not here to, to, you know, try to hurt you. I just want to make certain you have the correct information, and I care about you. I want you to be okay, and I want I, you to know that your feelings I, I, I are important. I get important. that, but I don't know if that's always the right approach. Like, look, it. I mean, it may not be. Right, no, it I, may I, not. I, be. It, every I want to. I want to make it clear. I think there's different approaches for different people mm-hmm. from different people, and I think it mm-hmm. takes a village, and there is no one size fits all. And I and I respect all different types of approaches. And the difficulty is right is determining which approach to take. In each given situation, as you're talking to a person, yes. that takes a long time to kind of hone that. And I'm, I gotta be honest, I'm only now feeling more comfortable being with that skill. Because if you watch something like I had with Eric from Think Easy, we demonstrated that. We demonstrated, look, this is a, a way to approach this with Eric. And he's actually questioning stuff now. That's, and that's the goal, right? Now, if I came in all hot and heavy, he'd probably been like, eh, you know, not interested. Right. He would have right. said, oh, you're just being like the geek room because <laughs> so he doesn't like, like the geek room much. You need to know who your audience is, but you need to also I, – I always just default to kindness. That's what I do. I just default to kindness because that's free. You know, I and you have to. Well, so also is being a dick. It doesn't cost away. me anything to be a dick to them, right? You know, yeah. and, and so and, and you you also need to know when to walk away. If something's too much for a person, and you're throwing all this evidence at them, they're just like, I just yeah, you know. What's your goal? What's your actually, goal of engaging with a person? In that I have that that kind of uh, happened today. Um, <laughs> there are groups that, who come to LSU, and there's this area called Free Speech Alley, which is. Not really an alley. It's like the sidewalk in front of the big main building on LSU's campus. And so different groups come there, and a lot of times religious groups, and there were Mormons there today. And so I I talked to one of the main guys who was there. And so part of the, for anyone who doesn't know, part of the thing about Mormonism is that they believe that, like, uh, Middle Easterners came to North America in, like, 600 uh, B.C. And so in... And, like, the last of them was, or the last uh, not wicked uh, of them was, like, the one who wrote down the the stuff in the Book of Mormon and then, like, buried it so that Joseph Smith could find it later, um, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's close enough. Close enough. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm ex-Mormon, so, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's close enough. Okay, I don't want to misrepresent. Uh, no, 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 you're fine. But, but uh, so I was talking to one of the guys, because they're all, like, 1920-year-old um, uh, kids there and so i was talking to this one guy and i was trying to explain to him like how there's no evidence of dna of uh, mitochondrial dna haplogroups that there were middle easterners in north america in 600 bc and there's no evidence of like you know middle eastern like architecture from that time or you know no influence that, from that that area over in the uh, yeah this, you know, the, the, the have... region you're referring to is, is actually the yucatan peninsula it's chichen itza it's guatemala and uh honduras areas those are where the they okay. think that the the tribes that came over there's two there was actually 
three migrations. Um, they think the descendants became the Olmecs, um, the Toltecs, the Mayans, and then if you go down further to Peru, the, the Incans. Um, I agree with you. I don't think there's any evidence to support that. that I mean, one of the reasons I'm not no longer LES, you know, I, I just, I don't see anything supporting any of that, right? So, I mean, I have to be objective and, and say, okay, well, if there is evidence to support that the narrative that there were Middle Eastern people over in Central America during that time, what would we expect to see? And I, I don't see that, right? Yeah, we, yeah, Native Americans never came, or people in the New World never came up with like the spinning uh, pottery wheel, I think it is. It was like uh, when like they came up with pottery, they, I think it was the spinning pottery wheel, if I remember correctly, because like it was independently made in like several different places in the Old World, but not in the New World. And so, yeah, you're right. It's just all these different in, all these different things that we should expect to be there weren't there. And I was explaining this to this guy, and I had actually he didn't know, but I actually knew one of the older one of the uh, the other elders who had been here like one of the previous semesters, and I'd kind of explained this stuff to him. And he'd even I'd even gotten him to like admit at one point that there was no genetic evidence for this crossing over, and. I kind of I saw the look on it on this guy's face today just fell and I was like okay well well I mean uh, some of them will say it's a, it's a matter of faith right but at that point you're yeah. just you're just now you know go, falling back into that whole well we don't know therefore it could be kind of thing and I, I just I can't support that type of narrative right now I will tell you I will people have made the criticism that I defend Mormonism I don't I don't defend their beliefs what I defend is misrepresentation. Of their belief, but I've done the same thing again for Catholics. I've done the same thing for any religion. If people misrepresent what the actual group believes, that doesn't mean I accept what they believe, right? Because I've heard people right. say some really weird stuff, and it's like, no, I, I, I do know what the church is involved. But my biggest issue with the LDS Church was the fact they got involved with um, trying to advocate against uh, homosexual marriage when I think that they should have stayed out of politics. That was my biggest gripe, and as well with something called Green Evergreen, which was a project they used for. Um, it's called reparative therapy, where they um, electroshock people to convert them from being gay to not gay. Mm. And the church donated to this and was supportive of this. I'm like, oh, no, I, not going to happen. So that was one of the big things I've had against the LDS church. So it wasn't their doctrine, yeah. per se. It was the it was the fact that, uh, I, one, I was against them involvement in the policy of, of uh, politics, their, their advocacy for electrotherapy and chemical therapy and other things to think that people could become non-gay sorry folks if you're gay you're gay you're not nothing's going to sit there and change you to be not gay any longer it doesn't happen that way okay just you're gay big deal um right and so well, the, the the well kind of the the whole uh point of my story was that um i do i do have to agree i think that it's not always uh best to try to come at it from like a you know, we have to be as soft as possible. I, I have no problem with engaging with creationists. Uh, just about evolution, whether or not God exists, like Mel said earlier, is, you know, that's their own thing. Good um, God, Mel. Furious fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, who pissed you yeah, off? <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, oh, I can hear you typing. Get... It's furious. I... Very fast okay, typing. I'm Very sorry. fast. No, I don't my, give a shit. My microphone is, like, really close. And see, I, I lost my stand, so I have oh, to put no, it in, like, a Pepe Le Pew and Penelope Cup. No, I thought somebody water. tweaked. I think somebody <laughs> tweaked on you or something. You're like, you know, going off. But by the way, I do want to put a shout out to the Lavender Lady. She was on um, uh, NGC Studios called The Place with Dr. Jones. If you guys haven't ever watched that, you guys are missing out. I know it's a it's a very niche channel, and a lot of you guys may not remember uh, the New Covenant group or remember The Place with Dr. Jones. Um, I talk to him quite frequently on Facebook. He's one of the nicest people that has ever lived i don't particularly say that i agree with him on everything but his argumentation style is superb and he's just a nice guy and i'm scared to death to go on the place he's invited me on numerous times um i'm not in that caliber to go on that show because it's just such awesome people that go on there and i'm thrilled to death to even be asked to but i, I don't think that i'm comfortable yet to go on it but uh the Lavin Lady's on it frequently, and she does a really good job. But if you guys haven't checked it out, go check out Dr. Jones on the uh, the uh, New Covenant Group channel. Yeah, he's a big I sweetie, you know. So, but a lot of people don't know. I mean, when I, it saddens me because I, I'll watch his stuff. He, there's only a handful of channels that I even watch any longer, right? When I go live, and I do watch Dr. Jones's channel, and I see like six people watching, and I'm like, oh, what? This this stop no stop this. This should be like ten times this. Easy. 
it's good content, and it really bothers me that they don't get the views that they should. Oh yeah, the you guys got views up into like seven fifty for the Raw yeah. Hoven show. We were that between was... seven fifty and seven hundred sixty live viewers. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. It, it was great. We're gonna hit that I, again. I watched it live. We're going to get, uh, well, I think the Matt Dillahunty will get that high, and I also, we're trying to arrange something, and I probably shouldn't say this, but we're gonna, we, are arrange, we are trying to arrange this, so it's not a lie, I just don't think it's come to fruition. Uh, Eric Hoven versus uh, Shannon Q, Poly, or Paula G, or Bill Lello. Ooh. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm prodding Eric, just, you know, poking him, just so, so gently, you know, but, yeah, hopefully. Exciting. Well, he's we'll been be on excited. a few times before, but yeah, I, uh, he's an interest. He's an interesting person. I saw his uh, m- the movie he put out, uh, Genesis Paradise Lost. My uh, sympathies. It was it was uh, interesting. It was hilarious because sometimes the the people in the movie would contradict each other. Like <laughs> it was just about most of it was just them, or a good part of it, I should say, was them just throwing out these quick little arguments and then you're just supposed to you know assume if, 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 if i ever take a chance to worth to watch it is it worth watching the whole thing i should just like watch the cgi or watch the interviews uh i think it's worth watching the interviews i mean the cgi is not bad but i think it's worth watching the interviews because like one of the things they say is that uh somebody says uh there's uh, the similarities between humans and chimps are overblown then the very next interview is with a microbiologist. I think it was Jackson uh, or Charles Jackson who said the first part. Then they interview a microbiologist, and he says, "Well, yeah, we we have statistical similarities, but that's not important." So it's like one guy said it's not, or there aren't statistical similarities. The other one says, "Yes, there, there are." Yeah, that's yeah, funny because so like, that's that's exactly back. the topic that we want to get Kevin Anderson on for um, with uh, uh, none other than Ruhiv. AKA Glenn Williamson, not doxing people know who he is. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Glenn, he, uh, he actually was the one that got Tompkins to reverse one of his papers or rescind one of his papers. And I don't think Anderson knows who Ruhif is. And I told him, don't, don't say anything, but we're trying to arrange that. Oh, you know what? I wasn't supposed to say anything about that. Sorry, Ruhif, whatever. My oh, bad. My yeah. Just let that one slip out of the bag. Steve, you're incorrigible. I know. Nobody watches this anyway, so nobody's going to know about it, so don't worry about it. There are 50 people who know about it, and they say words on the internet. They it's say words, words they on say the w- internet. They say words that Tommy Hall doesn't understand on the internet. <laughs> and they get mad the because, because you say you don't know what words mean. Uh, yes, Ruhif I do, but me. I, I asked him, I said, can I talk about it? He's like, eh, wait, and I, I forgot. Sorry, Ruhif, I made, I, my, my mea culpa. Um, whatever. Okay, Matthew Thomas says your secret's safe with me. Thank you. Um, yeah, I keep forgetting people listen to this every so often. Every once in a while, and you know they'll pick like a sentence and hold you to it for like the rest of your life. <laughs> oh no, shit, right? <laughs> I think people have digged through stuff from like three years again. ago. Do you remember when you said? Well, I changed my position. Okay, um, it happens. Oh, it happens, and, I, and I'm fine I'm with having, that. Like, so flashbacks of graduate school of a Chinese lady yelling at me in Mandarin because I set a fire in a lab or something. <laughs> We're infamous and not for anything good. <laughs> well, you know what's going to happen, Mel? When the lab fire you got, you got to remember something. Another, uh, give it two years or so, you'll be considered the old guard in the skeptic community and stuff. And so all the shit that you say now is going to be brought up then. Um, oh boy! So it, it'll remember that time you said that thing. Yeah, okay. yeah. Hey, Mel, do you remember before you got your, you know, 100 million subscribers? You know, back in the day. Um, <laughs> you were talking to Steve, and you said a word. Yeah, Steve. Oh, who? Wow. I don't think anyone will ever do that to me, fortunately. <laughs> Steve. You have more subscribers than me, Jackson. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how many have you got now? Holy yeah. crap! Now, no, let's be let's, let's be you clear. Got like almost seventeen hundred, right? Yeah, let's be clear. It's not yeah. the size of the channel, but the content. I've always maintained that, but it, it helps. Jackson's have, awesome, you know. though. I like Jackson's stuff. He does a good job. Oh, I thank you. I I try to be as factually accurate as I can with my information, and I still get uh, 
And then I still find out, hey, you made a mistake here, and it's like, crap. Well, yeah, yeah, but you got to do what Tony did. <laughs> exactly what Tony did. Tony, Tony yeah. did the best thing you could do. You, you just say, yeah, I fucked up. Here's, here's the, the, you know, I've, I've, I've pointed out a few things to Tony too, but, um, yeah. but, but yeah, you just say, yeah, I made a mistake. We all have scientist shit yeah. that we make mistakes on. Yeah, I know a few of the mistakes that I've made. Uh, I don't remember all of them, and. If I were to do like an errata video, I should probably like start writing these down. Like on this video, at a minute three seconds, I said this meant this, you know, something like that. Yeah. Uh, well, I would. My that video would be like twelve hours long if I made one for me. So I'm not bothering. <laughs> People know I fuck up all the time. It's yeah, okay. Yeah, but I make mistakes too. I use the wrong words sometimes, and I miss step a little bit. I miss steps a little bit, even when I was talking to Tommy. But trying to do the mental gymnastics of trying to figure out what he actually meant when he used the wrong words is quite exhausting. Isn't that the hardest part? <laughs> it's like it's like we know the words what they mean, right? Generally speaking, I think most of us have a pretty good vocabulary when it comes to the scientific terms yeah. for the most part. Um, even as myself as a layperson, I, I do okay. But when you're well, trying to do these mental gymnastics with them, oh my god, yeah. it's difficult. I mean, heck, I even made uh, a few mistakes in my most recent video, which was on uh, the evolution of ATP synthase, which I realized as soon as I put the video out and I put it in the description, I said V-ATP synthase yeah. instead of V-ATPase, and I was like, crap. Uh, yeah, the ATP well, is. that means you're wrong forever with everything from now on, Jackson. Well, exactly. It, it's happened. Not everyone knows. No, no, but Jackson, <laughs> you laugh. You laugh, but that's the kind of shit that Ronnie points out. Matter of fact, Ronnie points out all the time that somebody had made a mistake with the difference between VATPAs and ATP, uh, FATPAs. And it was not because the person didn't know what he was talking about. It's because Ronnie was inarticulate in which enzyme he was talking about. And so, matter of fact, again, with like Jake Herder, he had actually said, you know, can you tell me what ATP synthase is? Um, and he said, well, it's an enzyme. And Ronnie stopped him and said, no, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. And we're like, how is, how is that wrong? What, what the hell just happened here? You know? Oh, God. If it ends in ASE, it means it's an enzyme. There. I've, I've solved like 90% of the It, it was rather weird. It was rather weird. ASE means enzyme. Because, because, because Jake was right on. Yeah, he's, the first thing he said, like, well, it's an enzyme. And he said, no, it's not an enzyme. Well, what the what? What? So hey, at least. Uh, but the real question is: Does does DNA uh, dissolve in water? That is the real question. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It does dissolve in water. It totally falls apart. You know? It doesn't degrade, but it dissolves. Or yeah. sorry, does it degrade in water? I guess was the. <laughs> oh hey, uh, you know okay. I, I okay. I probably shouldn't do this. Please forgive me, but I gotta ask. So is this the real Dr. Guyman in the in the live chat? I've get. I'm too lazy to, to get off my butt to to actually check. Um, You're not in a Hello, chat. I saw your. I saw part of your uh, talk with with RJ. Hello. I started to watch it, but I couldn't actually watch it. I was um, involved with some other discussion. But is that really Dr. Guyman? Who's not are a you doctor? Really it looks the like person him. you say you are. are you a well, he, he's a young earth creationist, <laughs> and 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 again, I really, I, he's. I, I don't. I don't want to say too much about him, but um, I don't know if I should have a conversation with him for for some reasons. Um, but if he wants to, like you know, tell him if, you know him about himself, but he's he is odd, and he says a lot of odd things. Yes. Okay. I don't know. I'm not familiar. Yeah, that's right. Shannon. Shannon was also in that talk. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I watched uh, a little bit of it because I was last. I think it was uh, last night. I didn't even know what had happened until like I saw I saw uh, Shannon's tweet about it like a few hours later, and so I just looked at it a little bit. But yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> so well, I, I guess I missed message. most of it. So what was the big big topic that they were discussing? Uh, well, the part that I watched that they discussed was, uh, involved, like, Christian persecution in schools. That was, I guess, kind of towards the Why end. Why would they have that with RJ? RJ is, is evolution. Uh, That's his area. I mean, I mean, that wasn't the whole thing. It was just a little part of it. Uh, I'm sure they talked about it a lot more. But I'll have to go watch it. Well, I'll tell you uh, what, if, 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 if Dr. Guyman, is that how you pronounce his name? Guy man, sure. I'm not, that. I've been watching lots of my uh, YouTube history. Is like social spiders, the evolution of Perissodactyla. If, if he gets, if he gets parents' permission, I will be happy to have a discussion with him. 
but I, I need, think I need his parents' permission. Did you guys know there are social spiders? It's a terrifying thought, but there are. Really? They're kind of, I always thought yes. spiders were more of a non-social creature. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're not they're not you social or anything, but there are a few social spiders, like the the species of herbivorous spider, uh, Bagheera kiplingi, is uh, kind of social. Yeah, well, I'm arachnophobic, so I really don't care. I think they all need to go. Well, you uh, probably shouldn't watch my uh, scorpion evolution video. Scorpions then. are cool. No, scorpions I like. It's weird. I, 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 can't, I can't understand it. Spiders I can't stand, but I find scorpions to be fascinating. Yeah, they're really neat. It's too bad that they have uh, kind of a sex fossil record. <laughs> Guyman says, you don't need my parents' permission. I did the chat with RJ, and my parents didn't know. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, fair enough. All right, so, Steve. Fair enough. I've just gotten a message that G-Man wants to talk to me. Oh, no. Oh. You, I, you know what? I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just, I'm just not. I'm just, gonna, just not. Uh, you even know, going it's to... like okay. So, so I've been sending a screenshot to another thing that's going on right now live, and it said, "Drag, bring scientist smell in here." Uh, uh, hold on, wait. Is um, G-Man live? I know, goes, I know. She does Ronnie not is. wish to speak to Tommy. She's made that very clear. Yeah, I have very, very, you know, established boundaries, especially with Tommy and his view on. Women that are married don't have to consent to sex, but that's another show. And so um, he goes, oh, but I want to talk to her, and she needs to come correct. She said some stuff that I want to question her on. Well, da- that that woman be saying stuff. I need to question her. What the okay. hell is that? And then my friend's like, I'm not sure if she wants to speak to you. I'll ask, but don't get your hopes oh, up. Oh, G-Man is live. I, You know what? I, it didn't come up for me. Weird. Okay. Ronnie's dead. But... Okay, then I will not speak to her. Her head sounds too big. Don't got time for narcissist. <laughs> don't got don't got time <laughs> for I, narcissist. And goes, okay, lol. Oh God. Yeah. I, why so didn't I, I've essentially said I'm like if wait um, I need to know the following. What he wants to talk about. Why? What his goals are? And is this a debate or him saying words? Someone give me a link because I'm subscribed to GTV. I don't know why it didn't come up as a notification. It, ha- it that does do that so often. By the way, um, YouTube sucks um, for notifications. Sometimes I do here. miss stuff a lot, actually. Because um, somebody I post guess, that. Here, I'm gonna copy the link, and I'll, I, I can send it to you easier on Twitter. Can you pull up Twitter? Yeah, yeah, I got I'll Twitter put- tab open. Okay, so I'll pull it up on Twitter and I'll send you there that chat. Yeah, I, I mean, I just don't know what don't the point really would be. I don't really want to talk to somebody that's just going to bark words at me. <laughs> well, yeah, but you've been saying stuff and you're a woman. Well, so, the best you know. part is you don't get to answer all those words. So you just get to hear it. And then as soon as you start answering, you get cut off. That's how it works. Yeah. It sounds like he's trying yeah, to summon and you and behind it, you know, for 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 a uh, an inquisition. You know, the woman got uppity. I need to like call her in and set her straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know what, G man, I'm very good at baking a cake because I'm a chemist. You know, I, I've learned all oh, I about, you do know about bakery, sugar huh? works. Yeah. You know, caramelization of sugar. You know, we can like do stuff with really fun stuff with onions and peppers. Well, you and couldn't go in there anyways up. because uh, Tommy's in there, and I I wouldn't recommend that. I uh, you know yeah he has I. I I'm not going in there anyway. I've had to block him across the work as he's trying to contact me on Google Plus. Between that, it's a little creepy. I gotta admit, it's a little creepy. It it gets a bit creepy when I'm like, I don't want to talk to you. That should be the end. And then he makes a man's fighting video about me. And then he makes another video about (laughs) autoimmune disease and how wrong I am. And then he goes on some live chat with Imperial somebody or other and G-Man, and they're talking about how I need to be in the kitchen. Is it horrible that I actually like that word, mansplaining? Do I? Am I bad? <laughs> am I a bad man for that? I actually like that word. I don't know why. I use it, you know. What okay, I good. So like, you know, okay, you good, know, good. So. Yeah, that's what it is. I like, like that okay. word. I don't know why it's fucking hilarious, mansplaining. Yeah, you mean mansplaining yeah, to you, woman? <laughs> You know, how dare I know things? And I tried to, like, relay that. And then somebody oh who cuts lawns is going to tell me they know more than I do. Okay. <laughs> Where's your publication? Oh, yeah, that's right. You don't well, have it's, one. The, the problem is, is that... The problem is it's not so much that they think they know more. It's when you call them out on something, then they digress into, well, you know, I'm not an expert of that. 
Yeah, you know, and I'm like, have you, do you understand what flow cytometry is? No. Will you send me a paper about that? So I'm, what? I don't even know what the hell a, that is. What the hell would you a, say? What? 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 What, what was the word? a recent commenter who's been kind of doing that. He's like, <laughs> he posts these arguments, and at the very end, he's like, oh, but I'm not an expert in this. It's like, exactly. why are you posting these long arguments? <laughs> exactly. I can say that I'm not an expert in a particular thing, but I can say I've done these things. I understand these things. I'm willing to admit that I'm wrong in certain things, but it's just like... Well, I mean, in worst case, I know a lot of people um, that are more than qualified to call themselves, ex- call themselves experts choose not, choose not to use that word, and I understand that. But, you know, it's still... I have. You can say, I have more of an expertise in this field than you do without calling yourself an expert. And I think that's perfectly fine to do. Because you obviously have much more of an expertise in these fields than any of them. I mean, in fact, all of them combined. I mean, it's... I, I don't... I don't... Per, I, I don't sit here and say that I know everything. But the thing is, is I think I know a bit more than somebody who cuts lawns and is self-taught and reads Burke and the books and doesn't... Well, not really books. Reads things on natural news. Well, and Gina then finds, just, so, to- finds articles that that prescribes to his particular perspective on well, things, from natural doesn't news. think critically, you know, yeah. and then sits here is going to explain to me he doesn't know what the blood pain, brain barrier is. He doesn't. He doesn't know what T cells are. Doesn't. And I had to explain to him what that is. He doesn't know what flow cytometry is, but that was in a paper that he sent me. He doesn't understand what the 90% of the words are in the paper that he sent me, but he didn't even send me a paper, sent me an abstract. He doesn't understand the difference between an experimental paper versus a review paper, and I had to tell him that, and then he gets butt hurt because as I sit here and say, you don't know what words mean. I cannot have an effective discussion with you because you lack a fundamental understanding of basic biological concepts. Well, Bob just <laughs> said that G-Man said tap water has the same amount of chlorine as a swimming pool. No, I, I guarantee that is not a true statement. I've done water analysis before many, many, many moons ago, right? I mean, I have to do turbidity tests and titration and turbidity tests for salt, you know, chlor- in con- in wa- the salt content in water. And then you, you have to do titrations for various things, the tests for various things. And you have a total dissolved solid count. You have a chlorine count. And there's a lot of things. Matter of fact, one of the things we added is what's called sodium hypochlorate, which basically is a form of bleach. I mean, sodium hypochlorate is what they use to chlorinate stuff. And so we had to, we had to know a lot about sodium hypochlorate. And I can tell you right now, the amount of chlorine in tap water, nowhere near um, that which you'd find in a swimming pool. Nowhere near. No, no, not even close. I mean, we're talking magnitudes of difference. But chlorine is one of those things that you can smell it. So even a minuscule amount of chlorine, um, mm-hmm. you can smell in your tap water. Now, one of the good ways of getting rid of that, actually, because it comes out of solution very easily, is if you put it like water, tap water in a cup or something, you let it sit in your refrigerator for a couple of days, the chlorine will all pretty much dissipate by then. And it, it, it tastes better. But yeah, it's not like... What is he saying, Abad? He is saying he is referencing Aaron Brockovich as evidence for chlorine poisoning causing cancer. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god! Where okay. the? F- I can't. I can't. I just can't. My friends got back to me, and I asked them. Okay, so I need to know what the following. What you know, with G Man, he wants to talk to me. What he wants to talk about? Why? What his goals are? And is this a debate or him saying words? And he said, "All he said was cancer." <laughs> No. Oh. Cancer. <laughs> says, why is Aaron Brockovich a, a, a citation? I'm I'm confused here. <laughs> I'm so Aaron confused. Aaron Brockovich is a movie that he can relate to. Well, she was an activist as well. She was. She's still alive too. She's a real person. I mean, she's still alive, isn't she? I'm pretty sure she is. But I don't know where. Yeah, G doesn't. I don't know where he gets half these ideas from. And then he thinks everybody else is wrong for not agreeing with him on these crazy things. Like his whole vitamin B17, that was actually on the Drunken Peasants. They actually had brought that up. Um, and they put a clip about him talking about B- B17, which I-, I wish they would have like talked about it like with an actual scientist rather than Pimp Monk and Vadim. No offense, Pimp Monk and Vadim. But you guys were not the people to have on that show when talking about B17. It could should have been like um, that French guy or something. But what's his name? D. Francis? You know what I'm talking about? Jacques Francois. I don't remember his name. 
Oh gosh. But anyways, um, yeah, he, you know, G thinks that vitamin B seventeen is an actual vitamin, and everybody has explained to him <laughs> it's not a vitamin. A vitamin is something you need to survive. <laughs> a vitamin is a nutrient. A vitamin is something that most of the time the body produces, but not all of them, right? And we don't produce vitamin C, obviously, because the Gulo gene is broken, but. You don't need amygdalin to survive. It's not something that's necessary. It's not a vitamin. <laughs> but uh, oh, he doesn't goodness. seem to understand that. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, God. And, and no. the reason I can say that is I asked Doc Savage that, you know, we talked about that very thing, and I, I think it was Doc Savage. But somebody has said, even said, you know, that, and you had, well, Jackson, didn't you do something on this? On what? Um, amygdalin. Was that you? No. no. Who did it on amygdalin? I, I, uh, maybe it was David. But, uh, you know, Doc Savage had did a little thing on that. But, yeah, as people have been saying, though, you don't need vitamin 17 to survive. It's not a vitamin. It is amygdalin, which breaks down to hydrogen cyanide um, you know, I sent, I sent a case study to a friend of mine about a four-year-old who died of poisoning from amygdalin. <laughs> so it's, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Oh, I'm I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I hate interrupting, yeah. but this is um, this has never happened before. Uh, Abad just said, "Oh, look, true empiricism is correcting G man. He just said B17 is not a real vitamin. Wow, this could go down as a monumental equation here. Is this a fight that's brewing? Is this a love story that might come to an end here, or what? Is there is there trouble in the bromance? Yeah. Is he... <laughs> I, 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 now I want to go watch his stuff, but I'm having too much fun with you guys. Well, here's the thing. If they're going to use Aaron Brockovich as like a citation, they have to wear a tank top and Daisy Dukes. Otherwise, I don't see the point. I love Daisy Dukes. Uh, the, I do. I got to admit. Uh, call it sexist, whatever. But a woman, Daisy Dukes, is pretty. I mean, it's just awesome. Well, even a guy in probably Daisy, Daisy, Daisy Dukes will look good, I guess, to some of us. So I don't want to be too sexist. So. YouTube divorce. YouTube divorce. <laughs> well, I mean, G Man doesn't like anybody correcting him, and neither does Ronnie, so that might be uh, interesting. I mean, G Man kind of like, you know, went after me only for the fact that I was nice enough to invite him in a hangout, and all of a sudden I'm a bad guy. <laughs> you know, I'm like, hey, G, come hang with us. We're hanging out with Arn after, you know, he destroyed Hoven. Let's come and have some fun. You know, just chill out with us. Show, you know, thinking, show people your normal side. Then I realize that normal side doesn't really exist. I don't know. <laughs> I have not. I have not spoken to him. I've seen quite a few videos about him melting down and whatnot, but I've never actually spoken to him. So. You've never spoken to G-Man. Nope. Get out. I only had my one conversation with Ronnie. That wow. Oh, we got to fix that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't know that. Okay. So I know people were actually watching both. I am not watching both. So please fill me in. But I. I can't believe that uh, Ronnie actually agrees that vitamin 17 is not a vitamin. I mean, he got something right? Holy shit. I know, mind blown! Funny. I just, and, and now I'm in a conversation with somebody saying they're going to have to wear a tank top and Daisy Dukes. Like, are you sending this? I'm like, well, I can send some. I'm pretty certain they have a lot at the Goodwill locally. So <laughs> I'll send some, some, some Daisy Dukes and tank tops to G-Man so they can be like authentically you know, accurate. Do you want him citation. to wear them? Wait, do you want G-Man to wear a tank top and, top and Daisy Dukes? What? <laughs> you know, I mean, if they're going to quote Aaron Brockovich as a citation, they have to do that with the high heels. Otherwise, I don't I'm okay point. with that. I just don't think I want to <laughs> see, I don't think. Yeah, not high on my list of things. I can go to the grave never seeing G-Man in a pair of Daisy Dukes and be just fine with that. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and post it, but I don't mind. <laughs> oh, by the way, I, I, I'm kind of curious. Um, has G-Man known yet that we have um, booked uh, Matt Dillahunty? Did he know that yet? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. He hasn't flipped didn't out on it yet. Himself, he called himself like the Dillahunty Destroyer, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, but he mentioned something about uh, he mentioned something about always forgiven if we have if we set up Matt Dillahunty and G-Man, and I basically laughed hysterically and and. <laughs> discussed it with Kyle for half a second and said no. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think he knows we actually landed, Matt. And uh, it's going to be a good discussion with him at IP. Uh, inspiring the, philosophy. How did you, that'd be really cool to talk to him. I, he's he's a... I, or Dill Hunt is a guy I've always really <laughs> admired. He was one of like the first YouTubers I ever watched about atheism. I've always always thought highly of him. Yeah, I mean, I know... He, I mean, the 
the only biggest complaint against Dillahunty is that I mean he is he is very high on himself. Let's let's be honest. Um, but he he I think he's right for the most part on many things. Um, I think he presents good arguments. He's articulate. He's funny, um, and he's well spoken. And he draws a crowd. You know, that's everything. Yeah. G Man's not. <laughs> you know? So. So let's yeah. Somebody's oh Star Wars shirt. Yes. Oh, uh, someone in the Matthew Thomas said, "I see that Star Wars shirt." I so actually let's, have let's like quit, three or four Star Wars shirts. So yeah. Let's quit <laughs> talking about people that don't matter. So. <laughs> All right, so back to me. Uh, back to Jackson. You know, your name is like also a town. <laughs> Wait, what, Jackson? What, is this Jackson with Wyoming? Jackson, uh, Jackson Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi. Oh, Jackson, 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 yeah. Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Jacksonville North Florida. Carolina. Yeah. Jackson's uh, all over the U.S. Yeah. Jackson's yeah. awesome. I'm Actually, all over the place. I'm in your okay. monitor. I'm on the TV. Yeah. Jackson, Texas. So I actually once sang a song. I sang the song Jackson once with a friend of mine that lives in the UK. Um, and Jackson by June and Johnny Cash. And so my friend who lives in the UK played all the instruments. He sent me the bass line in the key that he wanted. So I just sang to the bass line and sent it to him. And then he put it all together. So it was kind of cool. That's the cool things about the internet. You can actually do a lot of cool creative stuff with people all over the world. So I've sung about you, Jackson, and I didn't even know you then. Well, yeah. Aww. Yeah, there you go. There we go. It was, it was uh, meant to happen. Is meant to sing, to sing my praises. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like your channel, but you're never going to hear me sing. Aww. Hey, we, yeah. we could, uh, I'll play we guitar, could but I won't sing. To get Steve to sing. Who's with me? By the way, I, I got to admit, I, I I know people like, oh, Steve just wants his ego stroke. But I'm, I'm really kind of self-conscious, especially when it comes to like things like my guitar playing, because I haven't played in, in decades. I'm literally starting from scratch, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm relearning chords. I'm learning, relearning, uh, you know, core, um, uh, chord progressions and scales, especially like pentonic scales. I'm having to start from scratch, even the point I'm rebuilding up my calluses. But I got to admit, even I thought I did a pretty good job on For Whom the Bell Tolls. Ah, that's cool. Did you listen to it? I think so, yeah. You think? How do you not? Wait, wait. You think? How do you not know if you listen to my rendition of For Whom the Bell Tolls or not? I think I think you played it for us. And, and no, no, no. My, my video. Geek I made a video on it. Oh, I, I thought you were talking about the time that no, you no, played no, no. and the after show in the Geek Room. No, 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 no. I actually have a, a video where I did a full run through recording it, and it, I think it sounded I pretty good. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't heard that. Right, I'll I send it to you later. To it now. Um, but I was actually even suppressed, and I think I, I think it was better than what Ronnie could do. Now, if Ronnie wants to 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 do that same song and you know see who's better, I'm okay with that. And if people think he is, that's fine. But I think I did pretty well on it. Have you seen? Okay, so there's some dude on YouTube that does a lot of finger type of work with guitars, and he has done a rendition of "Careless Whisper" by George Michael that just like you rips and your my Michaels. heart out. I love George Michael. No and shit. We're not, I love that song we're too. Not Careless Whisper is on my Spotify. Oh my god. I have to find you guys Careless Whisper by George I... Michael. But this dude, this dude this on the dude. acoustic, he does it all. And I'm just like, oh, and my heart's been ripped out again because I, I love George Michael and he's gone. Yeah. I unfortunately have to go. Uh, it's. It's eating time. Yeah, we're going to be ending this uh, really soon. Um, I just put the link in if people want to uh, see my guitar and you know kind of evaluate it. And again, I won't even play for like three weeks now, whatever my birthday was, and I haven't played. I haven't really played that song from the whole thing in probably since I was in the Navy. So that tells you how long ago it was that I, I played that song from start to finish. Well, um, I want to thank you for having me on again. And also thanks, Tony, for the shout-out. <laughs> yeah, I want to thank Tony, and I want to. We'll get with it if this ended. I do want to go watch that part where um, uh, Ronnie corrected G Man on the vitamin B thing, seventeen thing. I want to see if he actually what he actually responded. So, anyways, I want to thank you guys for joining. Uh, this was awesome. I I know we were going to have Prophet Azad, but he had to work, so we'll get him on the, the future. We also got a lot of other things planned out. We've got uh, non sequitur at home this weekend. Uh, we also got, uh, let me tell you what else is coming up here. Curious. Uh, we have Nate Durham coming out soon um, from Funny or Die. 
We have, let's see here. Oh, oh, on Saturday, I'll be on the Atheist um, Edge, which is uh, Jim's and TJ's uh, podcast. And that's going to be on their channel. And it's going to be at, uh, I think, uh, what time is that? I think it's 5 o'clock we decided on. Uh, Pacific, and I will be discussing why I'm agnostic for the really kind of the first time about detail my own um, theological position, and not just like the definitional stuff, but why I actually hold to an agnostic position uh, with Jim. So that's going to be interesting. That's going to be live. Uh, we also have um, uh, let's see here the friendly atheist. We're going to be doing. We're going to be talking to him coming up here as well, and I'll be on the the Geek Room on Saturday at six o'clock. Um, with Frankie and, the, and those guys, we'll be doing riffing something or other. I don't know what the hell we're doing. Of course, Frankie doesn't know what we're doing until like five minutes before the show, anyways, right? So, anyways, with that, thank you, Tony Reed, for the shout out. I also want to thank uh, other people that have shouted us out, like the uh, King Crocoduck and the Living Dinosaur, Holy Kool Aid, um, and many other people who have. And I, again, I think the skeptic community has come a long way from the old days. I think that we're doing a great job. I'm looking forward to working more with them. And I think we have a a, a good year or two coming up of just promoting great channels and having very skeptical videos and telling people about science and shit like that. Agreed? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yes, uh, Kid New Five, we do need to talk. We will, we will definitely talk. Um, by the way, if you guys not you guys don't know who this guy is, go check out his freaking channel right now. Get him some subs. He has like, like 12 subs or some shit. I don't know, like 250 or something. Inkydoo Five. Is that even it? Inkydoo? Where's Gilgamesh? Or, uh, yeah, where's the Gilgamesh Five? And, and, and Kidu, I can't pronounce his name. But fuck, he has some funny shit. His videos on, on Wolf is just a riot because it's so true. Um, he does wonderful parody stuff. I don't know how he doesn't have more subs. Um, I want to do something with him. I want to be part of his channel. I, I might just like be, you know, forget my shit. I just want to be part of his channel because they're so freaking hilarious. Um, but anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'm going to go watch some other stuff. And uh, we'll see you later on. And don't forget, subscribe to these guys' channels. Links will be in the video descriptions after I'm done. Uh, Scientist Mel and Jackson Weed, Hi. Prophet of Zod, uh, Exo uh, Exobite Spider, and everybody who's uh, shout out from Tony Reed and the Non Sequitur Show. <laughs>